Hello. Here I wish to share my ideas on machine to convert plastic to fuel. This is the project done by Ajman Roshan TJ, Swadi E, Sanjay R. We are the students of 8th semester BTEC Polymer Engineering, MG University College of Engineering, Todupira. Now let us see the scope of this machine. It's a new and innovative technology for conversion of the waste plastics into useful form of fuel by using catalytic conversion method. We know that the world is facing a great challenge on the disposal of the waste plastic. The major reason for this issue is that the accumulation of waste plastics in our environment, the bulk availability and the ease of manufacture. So we should find a suitable solution for this existence of the waste plastic in our environment. Hence this project is done based on these reasonings. The environmental issues created due to the waste plastics are increasing day by day. The major reason for this issue is that the plastics are non-biodegradable. So the remedy for this issue is to reduce, reuse or recycle. This plastic to fuel machine deals with the recycling of the plastics into suitable form fuel. Now let us see the principle of this machine. The plastics are made from the crude oil. Then why can't we think about the reverse reaction of the same? That is, plastic back into crude oil. Now let us see the certain procedures followed uh, for this purpose. In this, the plastics are melted at a high temperature in an inert atmosphere in a reactor. They are then vaporized and then passed to a catalytic cracker which is provided with a catalyst inside and then thus vapors from the catalytic cracker into a condenser. The condensate obtained have composition of gasoline, diesel and kerosene in them. This is the experimental setup of our project. This is composed of a nitrogen cylinder which is used to provide an inert atmosphere in the reactor which prevents the degradation of the plastic at high temperature. From, from our observation, this nitrogen cylinder is not very essential. The plastic waste in the reactor is melted at high temperature using a Bunsen burner which is fixed at the bottom of the reactor. At high temperature, this plastic waste gets melted and starts to vaporize. This vapor is allowed to pass through a small tube which is provided with a catalyst inside. This is the catalytic chamber. The vapors coming out of, out of this catalytic chamber is allowed to pass through the condenser and the final condensate is con collected in the jar. The molecular structure of this catalyst inside the catalytic chamber is just like a molecular sieve which will permit only the passage of small hydrocarbon molecules through them. Before we feed the material into the reactor, we should remove the dirt by washing and drying. Also, we should break these feed into small chips just to reduce the volume in the reactor. The addition of catalyst into the reaction reactor is also preferred just to provide a preliminary cracking in the reactor. Only certain plastics are used as a feed. They are polyethylene, polypropylene and polystyrene. Now let us see why only particular plastics are used as a feed. In case of PVC, polyvinylene chloride and fluorocarbon polymers. They are source of hazardous and corrosive gas like HCl. In case of polyamide, polyurethane and polysulfide, they are also source of hazardous gases such as nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide and so on. In case of PET, phenolic resin, PVA, polyoxymethylene, they give very low heat value compared to all other plastics. Hence they are not used as a feed. But in case of polyethylene, 
polypropylene and polystyrene. They have very high heat value and very clean exhaust gas. Hence, they are the typical feedstock for the fuel. Now let us see what is the need of catalytic cracking. The vapors coming out of the reactor composed of very high molecular weight molecules. So when these vapors are condensed, the condensate also contains this high molecular weight material. So due to this presence of high molecular material, there is chance for again getting polymerized. Hence, we get a waxy like material as shown in the first figure. But the catalytic cracker, the catalyst inside the catalytic cracker is a molecular sieve. Due to the presence of this molecular sieve, it will permit only the passage of small hydrocarbon molecules through them. Hence, when these small hydrocarbon molecules are condensed, there is no any chance for getting polymerized. Hence, we get a very liquid material as shown in the second figure. This is the relevance of this catalyst inside the catalytic cracker. The catalyst used here is zeolite which I mentioned earlier. This is the molecular structure of the catalyst, that is zeolite. From the picture it is very clear that this is like a molecular sieve. It will permit only the passage of small hydrocarbon molecules through them. It is due to this particular structure. We select this particular, particular catalyst in our catalytic chamber. We can do the same project by using a simple distillation apparatus. Here what we observe is that the walls of the condenser will appear waxy. It is because of the condensation of the large hydrocarbon molecules which get polymerized again. The final condensate have also the appearance of waxy like material. Here when this fine condensate is subjected to the fractional distillation. We can separate the constituents based upon their boiling point. Hence, we can separate the methane, petrol, diesel, kerosene into these classifications based on their boiling point by using a fractional distillation apparatus. Hence, this is also an acceptable method for doing this project. This was the first experimental setup in the laboratory without using the catalytic cracker. Here, the waste plastic is fed in the round bottom flask and is melted at a very high temperature using Bunsen burner which is kept below the flask. An inert atmosphere is provided inside the jar by using a nitrogen cylinder which is attached to the flask. 
and the vapors coming out of the RB flask is allowed to pass to the condenser and the final condenser is collected in the jar.